we're trying to work on some of the most pressing problems of our times. On the one hand, we have the climate crisis, obviously. But on the other hand, we also have a continuing digitization. And this digitalization needs to be managed somehow. We do not want our data to be spread around the world. We want to keep control. We want to become sovereigns of our own actions also in the digital world. And with our research, we try to help people to achieve this also in the future. My name is Gilbert Fritgen. I'm professor and paper left in our Pearl Chair in Digital Financial Services at the SNT at the University of Luxembourg. With the Pearl Program, the Luxembourg National Research Fund offers research institutions attractive funding to enable them to draw established and internationally recognized researchers to Luxembourg. Machines will become part of our economy, no matter what. Gilbert Fritgen's Pearl Chair is the result of a unique partnership between PayPal Europe, the FNR, and the University of Luxembourg. His team's research revolves around the management of decentralization technologies like distributed ledger technologies, or DLT for short. Distributed ledgers can basically be used for every kind of trustful interaction between individuals without the need for having some central intermediary, some platform operator like in the financial services industry, like a bank. Blockchain is one example. DLT can not only be used for monetary transactions, but basically for every kind of economic or organizational interaction. And not only for individuals, like for people, but also for organizations and even for machines. A concrete example for the potential utility of distributed ledger technologies lies in space robotics. SNT's Lunar Lab is one of the few facilities across the globe that simulates lunar conditions for testing applications, such as multi-robot interaction. In this project, Professor Fritgen collaborates with SNT's research group for space robotics. In space, the unexpected can happen quite frequently. So when we send a robot to the moon or Mars, it has to have a certain level of autonomy. We cannot just control its every move from Earth. Now imagine robots do not come from the same organization, but it's robots from several different organizations collaborating. And we will see that in the next, let's say, 10 to 20 years on other celestial bodies. So the question is, how do these robots make decisions? And they need to have a certain economic rationale. Here, DLT could be used to enable trustful autonomous interaction between the robots based on regulations that the parties agreed on prior to the mission. For example, when they need to negotiate drilling rights, or when they provide each other with information, like maps of their surroundings. And even transferring funds autonomously to receive the information is a potential scenario. In the future, the findings in space research can also be applied to Earth. We will see in a couple of years fully autonomous cars driving around, basically looking for passengers. And once in a while they will need to be recharged. So a car will go to a charging station. And this will be something, let's say, what we do not observe a lot today. Two machines doing an economic interaction. And there will be technologies required to coordinate this and these will be the same technologies that we are doing research on in our space research. For their economic interaction, the machines might also use cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin and co. have become a symbol for decentralized finance, a trend that has been shaking the banking sector in recent years since the blockchain technology the cryptos are based on promises manifold use cases in the industry. We're also looking into the topic of cryptocurrencies, decentralized finance in the financial services sector. So what does that mean? What we do is so-called on-chain analytics. We really have a look at the transactions on the blockchain and we could identify, for example, also, let's say, fraudulent behavior, but also questions uh, around decentrality. So are these decentralized finance platforms really as decentralized as they claim to be. The team found that the platforms, so-called Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, or DAOs for short, 
are often controlled by only a few members, who decide on the rules the application is based on. These DAOs and cryptocurrencies are also involved in the decentralization of the art market. Via DAOs, it's now possible to buy small digital pieces of famous paintings or other artwork, a so-called non-fungible token, or NFT for short. So you could buy, let's say, a square centimeter of a Picasso, for example. So it would be nice for many people, but on the other hand, the art market currently is also criticized sometimes in terms of there's a lot of money laundering there. So if we now digitize this, we might even have more problems. So what can we do about that? We have a current project ongoing where we try to link NFTs that represent, for example, shares on pictures on the art market to digital identities. A digital identity would be some kind of digital representation of the individual's identity. So to the identity of the owner of this piece of art, who can then also be held responsible in, in terms of if, if money laundering or the like happens. Another area that's changing towards decentralization and showing an enormous need for research is the energy market. We're moving away from conventional, centralized, towards decentralized power generation. The problem, renewables fluctuate. That can lead to temporary mismatches between power generation and need. So what we are doing as a group is we try to understand the electricity market on the one hand and the user behavior, the demand behavior on the other hand. And this can be industrial demand, but we also want to look at individual behavior, for example, owners of electric vehicles that want to have some automated control of the charging process of their electric vehicles so it matches the generation of a large share of renewables. Gilbert Fritken and his team seek to contribute to creating a world where decentralization benefits as many people as possible. Their highly interdisciplinary approach including competencies in technology, but also in management, economics and social sciences, enables them not only to look at the technology itself, but also at its utility in industry and society. I hope to be able to shape the future a little bit. On the one hand, with the concrete research results or the concrete industry collaborations, but also with the people being trained in my group because later on they will go outside and they will take jobs, they will, some will become academics, some will go to industry, and uh, independent of their career, they will also leave a footprint. So everything that they learn here, that they will also use to shape the future themselves. Yeah.